So my opponent just stated that it should be the doctor's job to help them through to the end and try to cure them. But the definition of terminally ill is that that is their prognosis. They will be dying within about six months. Or basically their prognosis is just death. There's not an alternative. There's, there's basically no hope of them being cured. And then she goes on to say that um, most of the United States is against physician-assisted suicide. That may be true, but that is also probably because the general public is not educated on it. Um, as according to the New England Journal of Medicine um, and the experience of organ nurses and social workers with hospice patients, 59% of hospice employees um, surveyed supported the Death with Dignity Act, and only 26 opposed. So majority of hospice nurses supported the Death with Dignity Act. That's because they see this in action. They see these dying individuals and how much pain they're in. So I would say taking the, um, the suggestion of hospice employees who actually see this rather than the ignorant public who does not see the pain and suffering that individuals are going through, or these patients are going through, the terminally ill. The terminally ill um, I believe that hospice employees would be a more accurate gauge on whether or not this should be um, legalized or not. Um, and then also, my opponent goes on to say that we should not be commissioning doctors to kill, and that um, it's that actively, or physician-assisted suicide is actively killing versus passively. According to the British Medical Journal, an article by Lynn and Leslie Doyle, who are a, a professor of medical ethics and professor of health and social care, the most articulate opponents of involuntary passive and active euthanasia accept that there's no moral difference between commission and omission in the medical withdrawal of life-sustaining treatment. Also, they go on to say, what is deemed to be morally and legally important is not the emotional, emotionally appealing distinction between omission and commission, but the justifiability or otherwise of the clinical outcome. The distinction between omission and commission may be of little value in some healthcare settings. When doctors turn off ventilators for seeing the death, that death will result, it makes little sense to say that they do so passively. So if a doctor is actively going to turn off that life support, I don't think that that's a passive, um, a passive way of killing their patient, I guess we'll say for lots of better terms, or letting their patient pass. And again, this, what we are proposing is all entirely voluntary. The patient has the means of which to end their life and is on their own terms. And again, with um, physician-assisted suicide, they're saying, I know before they were mentioning that um, financial burden is a big part. They don't want that to be a pressure for people to turn to physician-assisted suicide. But according to the New England Journal of Medicine in August 2002, and again, in the experiences of organ nurses and social workers in the hospice, um, they reported that amongst the most um, the most important reasons that the patients were requesting prescriptions for lethal medication were not actually due to financial burden. It was due to the desire to control the circumstances of their death the, and to the wish to die at home in comfort around their family or however they wish to. And again, they were in fear of the loss of independence and loss of dignity in their last days. So realistically, if you were given the option to die at your own like under your own circumstances, at your own hand, deciding how you go rather than sitting there waiting day in and day out. When is this gonna end? How am I gonna go? Who knows how painful or excruciating your death may end up being if you go by natural causes. So why not take that into your own hands and be able to choose the means of your own death? I, as a closer, I would like to propose the story, or bring up the story of Brittany Maynard, who is actually a California citizen. Um, she, and she actually moved to Oregon just so that she could um, take advantage of physician assisted suicide. Once she had the pills, but had not actually followed through with it yet, she said, now that I've had the prescription filled and it's in my possession, I've experienced a tremendous sense of relief, and if I decide to change my mind about taking the medication, I will not take it. Having this choice at the end of my life has become incredibly important. It has given me a sense of peace during a tumultuous time that otherwise would be dominated by fear, uncertainty, and pain. Thank you.